Acts chapter number 8. Again, reading verse number 1, the Bible says, And Saul was consenting unto his death. Talking about Stephen. And at that time, there was great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial, and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hauling uh, men and women, uh, committing them, committed them, and committed them to prison. Glasses are messed up. Let me tell you, read that verse again. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hauling men and women, committed them to prison. Therefore they were scattered abroad, went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the, the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with uh, palsies and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Thank you for being a good God. Now help us tonight to glean from the Scriptures. Help us to leave here being everything you would have us to be. Meet every need of every heart and help us to embrace this new year, Lord, with a greater zeal to be greater witnesses and a greater ambassador for Christ. Bless now. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice several things. I want you to notice, first of all, the persecution. In verse number 1, we find the Bible says, And Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Now, if you remember in Acts chapter number 1, before Jesus ascended and went back to heaven... He told them to tarry at Jerusalem, and he said that when the Comforter was come, the Holy Ghost would come upon them, that they would be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. Well, then we find in Acts chapter number 2, when the Spirit did come upon them, 3,000 were added to the church. Uh, you go over to Acts chapter 5, you'll find, uh, 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 f or Acts chapter 4, you'll find 5,000 more added to the church. Uh, and uh, many experts believe uh, uh, by the time you get to Acts chapter 8 that the church at Jerusalem had grown to about 30,000 members. The problem was they weren't going to Judea, Samaria, and the other parts of the world. They were all just hanging out in Jerusalem. So God sends persecution to scatter them so that they would go about doing what he told them to do. Can I say a lot of times troubles come into our lives so that we'll be busy about the Father's business. So we will do what we should have been doing in the first place. And sometimes God will stir our nests uh, to awaken us that we will be focused upon the will of God for our lives. We see the persecution. Notice the pain in verse number 2. Devout men carried Stephen to his burial made great lamentation over him. Stephen, a great man of God... And Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost and power, was stoned to death. There was great lamentation for him. Can I say, serving God, living for God, you live for God long enough, you're going to see uh, uh, some that were great in the faith uh, that will be fallen, that will uh, go to the grave, and it's painful, and you should mourn over those that uh, have been your heroes and those that have been a blessing, those that have been strength. It's never easy seeing the Lord take someone even though we know where they are. Notice, if you will, the prison bound in verse number 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hauling men and women, committed them to prison. That word hauling means dragging. We see uh, folks were taken to prison. The audacity to worship Jesus. Got him a prison sentence. Then I want you to notice the preaching, verse number 4. Therefore they were scattered abroad and went everywhere preaching the word. That's what they should have been doing in the first place. 
Verse 5, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Can I say it's always been a preaching way. God has chosen the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. A lot of people in this day and age want to use all kinds of other means to bring people to Christ. You know what brings people to Christ? Preaching. Amen. Jesus, uh, he preached. He anointed his apostles to preach. It's always been a preaching way. And when preaching was done, things happened. We see the power of God in verses 6 and 7. Those that were demon-possessed, the demons were cast out. Those that had the palsy were healed. Those that were lame were healed. God did great things uh, to prove that those were God's men. We've seen the power of God, and then we see the great pleasure. Look in verse number 8. And there was great joy in that city. When people get right with God, just as uh, 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 Lucas told his little friend, when people got, get right with God, there's great joy, there's pleasure. There's happiness. There's excitement. And thank God when God moves in. Well, I was reading this and studying this, and uh, I was interested up there in verse number 3. As for Saul, of course, we know this is Saul of Tarsus, who would later in chapter 9 get born again on the road to Damascus and go on to become the great apostle Paul. But here he's the great Saul of Tarsus. And he is a ruler of the Jews. He is sent forth and given power to have Christians arrested and even murdered. He considered to the death of Stephen. And here we find him in verse 3, he makes havoc of the church. Now this is things we don't have any idea about. We've never been persecuted. I mean the toughest thing we get, somebody shows up and leaves this little note, they don't like our Christmas tree. That's not havoc. Hmm? As a matter of fact, it's comical. We had a little joke about it. But we've never suffered. I mean, the worst that's ever been said to any of us is quit passing out tracts, or I don't want to hear it. That's not what is taking place in verse number 3. He made havoc on the church. Look what it says. Entering into every house and hauling men and women committed them to prison. Now think about this. A lot of times we just read the Bible, we just read it. But I want you to think about what is transpiring. Saul of Tarsus has uh, probably Roman soldiers entering into houses and dragging people out of their houses and taking them to prison. Now think about that. Now first of all, it said entering into every house. How would they know who was believers and who wasn't? They didn't have Bibles. They didn't have low crosses on their walls. They went into every house and they drug men and women out and committed them to prison. Wrecking havoc on the church. They said, we're going to stamp out this Christian religion once and for all. You see, if 30,000 people got saved, do you realize what that is? That's 30,000 people that are no longer going to the temple, giving the temple money. If you ever want to know truth about something, just follow the money. Amen. You want to know the truth about all this impeachment with the president? Just follow the money. You know why Ukraine's been brought up? Just go follow the money. Joe Biden's son made a lot of money from Ukraine. You know who else did? Nancy Pelosi's son. Over $1.1 million from Ukraine. Just follow the money. All you got to do is step on people's nickels and they get real upset. They're losing money. They're losing people and interest. Why in the world do you think the Catholic Church started trying to stamp out the church? During the Crusades. Because people were being born again and leaving the Catholic Church. That's what it always is about. Money, membership, Amen. power. It's always about that. Well, they're coming into every house, wrecking havoc on the church, dragging men and women into prison. I was reading that. I got to thinking about that. got to thinking about them just busting open doors and coming in. What if that happened today? What without warning, they started coming down your street, kicked open your door, and came into your house. And so I want to preach with 
this little thought, entering into your house. Would there be enough evidence in your house and in my house to convict us of being Christian? Hmm? If they can kick it open the doors tonight, what would they find in your house? Now think about it. Hmm? I hope that never happens, but it may. You see a lot of these end time movies coming out, and they go into people's houses looking for their weapons, go into people's houses looking for their money, go into people's houses looking for their allegiances, and I can tell you right now, they'll go into people's houses looking for their God. Amen. I wonder if that happens. What will they find? I wonder, first of all, will they find the Spirit's presence in your house? Hmm? If they enter you in your house, will they find the presence of God in your house? Hmm? You know, if you go into a house that's not been lived in, you can tell. You can also go into a house and you can tell people's lived there and dwelled there. You know, a house, if it sits very long without somebody living in it, it starts to deteriorate. Hmm? There's something about dwelling in a house. Can I say, a house without the presence of God, it deteriorates. Hmm? I wonder if they enter in your house and they start looking around if they'll sense Him. Hmm? Now think about it. They had to sense the presence of God to drag them people out of there. Why else would they drug them out? Hmm? Would they find the Spirit's presence in your house? If they entered in your house, would they find the Scriptures promoted? Would they find Bibles in your house? Will they find placards on the wall with Scripture verses? Will they find evidence that the Word of God has been in your house? You see, back then, they didn't have the completed Bible. They didn't, have, they didn't find that in their house, but they should find it in our house. Hmm? They're going to find it. And if they find the Scriptures, will, they, will the Scriptures be promoted? Will they be in a prominent place? Or are they going to have to dig for them? It's amazing when people go on vacation to hide their valuables. In case somebody breaks in, i got news for you. The thief knows where you're going to hide them. Thieves are pre professional. They go to all them places. I know some of you freeze your money and put it in your freezer. They know that. You say, how do you know that? Because I know that. And I'm not a thief. But I watch movies. Huh? They know you're going to stuff it under your mattress. Huh? They're going to put it in your underwear drawer because they think nobody wants to go through your underwear drawer. They're looking for your money, not your drawers. Are you listening? They know where you hide stuff. Well, I wonder, if do you, do you hide the Word of God or do, is it openly promoted in your house? Hmm? If they enter into your house, will they find the Spirit's presence, the Scripture's promoted? Will they find the Savior's peace? You know... I can, I can, I can visualize the trauma... As throughout the city, centurions are busting through doors, and you can hear people screaming, and you can hear people's children being taken from them. You can, you can just visualize the trauma and, 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 and the uh, tragic event taking place and unfolding. But those that had met Jesus, I can imagine them having a different presence about them. Even though it's terrible, even though they're terrified. They had a peace that passeth all understanding. I wonder if that happened to us, if we'd find that same peace. Hmm? If you've never read Fox's Book of Martyrs, and there's other books about famous martyrs. Many times they tell them to recant the name of Jesus or they would burn them at the stake. They tell husband, I'm going to burn your children, burn your wife, unless you recant Jesus. And not only would he not recant Jesus, 
But when they would light his family on fire, he'd just get into flames with them. And they would sit there and they'd be singing as the breath went out of them. It impacted those that thought to, uh, uh, folks would be so terrified that they'd turn their back on Jesus only to see him not only not turn their back, but have peace when they left this world. Hmm? You see, when the church has always been persecuted, whenever it's been persecuted, it always grows. Because when it is truly put to the test and our faith is tried, they'll see the difference between the real and the unreal. And if they enter your house, they're going to see the, the, the Spirit's presence, the Scripture's promoted, they're going to see the Savior's peace. That's what separates us from the, from the rest of the crowd that claims to be saved. We really have Him. You say, well, I don't know. Well, I, I promise you, if your faith is ever tried, He'll show up. Hmm? Thought about this. They enter your house. Will they find a song of praise? Can I say it's easy to sing when you're on the mountaintop, but it's sweet when you sing and you're in the valley. Hmm? When you don't supposedly have anything to sing about and you still got a song, that's when it's real, friend. Hmm? They can take everything from you but him and your song. And there is a garment of praise for spirit of heaviness. And can I say, I hope this never happens in our lifetime. But if it does, it'll separate the men from the boys. It will show who's real and who's not. You see, it didn't cost us anything to come to church tonight. I'm glad you're here. I know it's a nasty night, and I know everybody could have something else to do, and I'm glad you chose to come to the house of God. But really, it didn't cost us anything. Those folks, it cost them to stand for Jesus. Here's the thing. Verse 8. When Stephen's down in Samaria preaching and folks are believing and folks are getting help and folks are getting saved and there's great joy, they're still up there in Jerusalem, a bunch of folks in jail. Why we're here tonight and we testify and we sing and we enjoy the goodness of God there are people in this globe in jail for the same faith that we say we have. There are people in China, Indonesia, India, Africa, places across the world that are in prison for their faith because they had the audacity to believe in the same God that we believe in. And I thought about this. If they enter into your house, will they find these great things? Or will they find a sorry prodigal? So they'll find somebody whose lips say they're a Christian, but their heart is far from God. Just a prodigal, somebody that used to be on fire for God, somebody that used to have a touch of God, somebody that used to would have went to death for him. Remember Peter? Lord, I'll go with you all the way to death. For the next morning, he's denied him three times. Why? Because he was a sorry prodigal in his heart. Boy, we want to embellish the glorious. And all Jesus wanted Peter to do is the same thing he wants us to do, to live for Jesus, to love Jesus. And can I say they may not enter our house not to haul us off to prison for being Christian but your neighbor may enter your house the Lord himself may want to enter your house I hope you're not like Revelation 3 Christian where you stand outside the door knocking wanting to come in you won't let him in how's your house tonight and not only your physical dwelling place, but how, how about the house for your soul? Amen. How's your heart tonight? What's going on in there? 
Are you a true Christian? Are you real? Or are you just a Christian Sunday and Wednesdays? Thank God for folks that are real. Thank God that for folks that are real in the community and real on their job and real wherever they are. They're just them. They're real because they know Jesus and they have the joy of Jesus living in their life. Years ago, I'll never forget, they came out with that bumper sticker. This was in the early 80s. said, if you was tried for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to find you guilty? Jesus said, when, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? Can I say the closer we get to the second coming of the Lord, there's more people professing Christianity, but there's less Christians than I've ever seen. There's a lot of people that have lip service. But thanks be unto God for folks who are real. Somebody may enter your house in the next few days. Will they find the things of God? Or will they find a stuffy place with no presence of God? God help us to be real. God help us to be mindful there are folks in prison. And God help us to live our lives with great joy because of the great things we have seen of God. Maybe tonight you just need to come and thank him that you're not in prison tonight for your faith. Maybe tonight you need to come and thank him for saving you. Maybe tonight you need to come and ask him, God, give me enough that if my faith is put to the test, I'll come out and bring you glory. Sure. Maybe tonight you need to come and say, Lord, give me the boldness to be a witness. Maybe tonight he spoke to your heart about something else. We'll do business with him. That's why we're here. And leave out of here different than you came in. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. They enter your house. What are they going to find? They're going to find a house or they're going to find a home? The dif difference is Jesus. Folks are praying, they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, we're not in jail tonight for our faith. Lord, I'm glad your grace has prevailed in our lives. Now, Father, help folks to not only have a, a home that exemplifies you, but their house for their soul will exemplify you and help us make a difference in these days we live. Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you for grace. Speak to hearts. Help folks to be sensitive. Somebody here tonight just might need some encouragement. Just God blessing this invitation. Get glory. Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.